And let's talk about Alembic Pharma. That particular counter is actually down in today's trading session. Uh, it's uh, uh, That's on back of their earnings. Let's bring on board uh, the MD of Alembic Pharma, Pranav Amin. Uh, good morning, Mr. Amin. Thank you so much for joining us on ET now. And let's talk about your earnings. Although the growth in the United States was decent actually this time around, what are the challenges that you're actually facing uh, there in terms of price erosion or and any on the demand side? So the U.S. business is an important business for us. And if you see the last four or five years, we've grown at about five years, we've grown at a CAGR of about 25%. Having said that, last two years has been uh, one of very high days when we had many opportunities with high prices. Since then, and if you've seen the first two quarters, including this one, on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, we've seen a degrowth in the U.S. business. That's because of price compression. And having said that, on a sequential basis, uh, I believe the worst is over us. The price erosion now is uh, much less than low single digits, in my opinion. And I think the market has settled compared to what we were. Again, as I mentioned, we had a very high base of last year uh, where we sold uh, uh, very high prices uh, in the U.S. market. All right, Pranav. Uh, but how is the launch pipeline looking in the U.S. markets? And could you help us with some key product launches that are planned in the new year? Absolutely. So, uh, as you know, we've been filing about 25 odd ANDs, 25 to 30 ANDs every year. And we should launch at least 15 to 20 products every year. Having said that, uh, we, we launched six products in uh, Q3. In Q4, we launched another five. Uh, so we have some interesting products coming on as well. There's two FTFs coming up in the next six months. There's our first inhalation product, which will also come in the next uh, quarter or two. So the launch pipeline is looking good. We believe that from where we are today and growing on this phase uh, should be possible with all the increase in the approvals that we're going to get. Uh, your company recently actually settled uh, a case with Sanofi Aventus for a uh, draw. Uh, uh, drone their own tablets, sorry for that, and also one more. By when is the launch expected for these products? There's a bunch of uh, FTFs. Uh, there's two, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. The one, uh, one of them, the Villazodone, is expected in June sometime. And the other one uh, is in also in end of June. Uh, give us a sense of uh, what the outlook is for the India business and any challenges that you're anticipating that you might face? Thanks, sir. But actually, it's quite contrary. I think our India business has done very well for us. Of course, we have a seasonal portfolio. But having said that, the India business uh, has grown uh, by about 17%. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The uh, acute has grown by over 20%, whereas the chronic has grown by about 13 odd percent. So it's been a really good year for the India business. Uh, moving forward, I think that's a new base for us. And we're going to see in Q4 at least a lot of the sales happening due to the COVID that has been more resurgent in January and February of this year. So our acute therapies should do well. But this is a matter of, I think we've been working on uh, India business for a while. And the last couple of quarters have been uh, good. And we expect to continue this momentum where we'll grow faster than our represented market as well. Right, Mr. Amin. So let me continue on to the question that uh, that Alex asked and with your answer as well. So what are your growth projects, uh, projections in terms of numbers then? So it's uh, India business is always a function of uh, what's happening in the overall marketplace. I think the only thing we can say is uh, we will grow faster than our represented markets. So if the market is growing at, let's say, 12%, we'll grow 15%, vice versa. I think that's what we've done in uh, this quarter as well. Uh, could you also give us a sense of uh, the kind of raw material inflation that you're experiencing? Uh, I think across the board, companies are facing this, but uh, how is it impacting your margins? Um, could you also tell us uh, what the growth in the API segment is looking like? Yeah, no, absolutely. You're, and you're 100% right. I think RM, there has been a significant RM uh, pricing pressure for pharmaceuticals uh, coming out of the COVID disruptions. And actually, I would say not just RN, but for the international business, another part which has been very uh, major in terms of everyone's costs is the supply chain expenditure, where your air as well as sea freights have gone through the roof. So the, both those have played a little bit of a havoc. Uh, apart from that, there's also been uh, disruptions in the U.S. side on the logistics in terms of shortage and trucks. So we saw a whole bunch of that in the last quarter. I think RN uh, increase in prices is something that we're seeing across the board. Has it materialized into opportunities for the API space? No, not as yet, because these 
increases have happened in uh, the basic chemicals and intermediates that are coming out of China for everyone. For us, to a certain extent, we're a little limited to that, restricted to the fact that this is mainly for the India business where we get more imported materials out of China. On the whole, as a corporate, uh, we don't import as much as a percentage from China for our raw materials, so that has helped us to a certain extent. Uh, your next question was on the API business. Uh, it's a great business. Again, last year was a very high base for us, and we did very well. Um, on this co- in this quarter, we've degrown by about 7%, but that's expected because last year we had a tremendous year due to COVID. Moving forward, I expect the API business to grow by at least 10% year on year. All right, Pranav, thank you so much for joining in, for giving us that perspective. Pleasure speaking with you as always, and wish you all the best for the rest of the financial year.